Okay, so maybe this doesn't look like talking in a baby. But I've always dreamt of being the person who was allowed to name the color of crayons or paint. So this is my chance. I'm going to name this design something pretty. Instead of wormholes, I'm going to call it tucking in the baby. And you'll understand that as we progress. I'm going to address something here that was brought up on our Facebook page, Sit Down Free Motion Quilters. And it was from a new free motion quilter wanting to know how to start and stop your stitching. I remember thinking that way back when myself, so I'm hoping to cover it coming up right now. To start your stitching, you're going to sink your needle into the fabric, and then you're going to pull your quilt away from the initial stitch after you bring the needle up. You can see that bobbin thread being pulled to the surface, and I've purposely used two colors of thread so it's easy for you to tell one from the other. If you pull the upper thread to the top, it pulls the bobbin thread to the top. Now we're going to grab both threads and we're going to move back to our original hole that we put our needle into. And that's going to be our starting point. To lock your stitches, take several very tiny stitches before proceeding, or I'll show you later if you're going to be burying your knots how to do that. But once you do those tiny stitches, you can begin your stitching. When you're finished, to avoid strain on your needle, pull some of your upper thread loose above the needle, and then you're going to pull your quilt about six inches away from there. Now hold on to your needle thread, pull your quilt back to where you started, and go back to your last stitch, lower your needle, and then bring it back up again. And just like when we started, your top thread pulls your bobbin thread back up. And now you're going to move your foot out of the way. If you're going to bury your knot, you want to pull up a substantial amount of bobbin thread. If you're not going to bury them, you can just trim it off close to the fabric here. To bury your knots, you're going to tie your bobbin and top thread into a knot. But you want to make sure that you don't bring that knot tight down to your fabric. So if you insert a needle between the threads, this will prevent the knot from being too close. Now you're going to thread your needle. You can use either a standard needle or a self-threading needle. And you're going to take your needle and insert it in the last stitch that you stitched. You're going to get that needle between the layers. Double check on the back to make sure you haven't gone through the back of your quilt. Once you've made sure of that, pull your needle all the way through and you'll actually hear a little pop. That's your needle or your knot rather going in between the layers and then you can just trim it close to your quilt. And that's how you bury your knot. The reason I chose this particular free motion quilting fill is to give you more experience, first of all, in echoing. Echoing is something that you use a lot of in quilting. And what we're going to do with this particular design is we're going to stitch a curvy line from top to bottom. And then if you use your foot, 
as a gauge, you're going to echo that curving line. Take your time, there's no rush here. And we want to echo it twice. So go ahead, again using your foot, up against your previous line. We're going to close, get a little closer now. And just use your foot as a guide to keep yourself fairly consistent in how far away from your previous that you were going to go. Now let's move up a little bit further and do that again. Now we can relate this a little bit to the baby part of this name I have chosen. Picture yourself late at night, middle of the night, baby's crying, you get up, you start walking the baby in the room, back and forth, and back and forth. And of course you're zigging a little bit because, well, you have all these toys laying all over the place, and you don't want to drop the baby in the process. But nonetheless, the baby's still crying, so let's do some more walking, lots of toys laying there. But we're going to get this baby soothed down so that we can finally get him tucked in. So I can go back to sleep. Just so you're not confused, we're going to refer to these walking paths later as your crib rails. Okay, we're going to put the baby down in his bed. Now we're going to start tucking him in. And when you tuck in a baby or a child, you always tuck those covers underneath them. You don't just bring them to the side of the crib, you tuck them down under. So the same with the stitching, we're going to tuck it down under, almost going to the previous blanket that you wrapped around that baby. You go from side to side, tucking that stitch down in. Again, you're keeping your stitching consistent as far as echoing by using your foot. But each time you get to an edge, you're going to tuck that baby in. Take that over to the other side and tuck that baby in. Use your foot as your gauge, bring it to the other side, and tuck that baby in. To the other side, and tuck that baby in. To the other side, and tuck that baby in. You're going to be hearing this in your head every time you do the stitch. Tucking that baby in. But that'll give you a much nicer look than if you just veered from side to side. This gives it a new dimension. Gives it a curve. Now I'm going to show you things not to do. Do you see how that wasn't tucked in at all? So instead of looking like tucking in a baby, it looks like a blade of grass. doesn't have that nice curved look to it. Here's another problem you might encounter. Trying to keep your stitches even with your foot, you're not seeing the side of your bed rail. So you either don't quite get there or you go past it. So we're going to go back to our mantra, and we're going to, what? We're going to tuck that baby in. Keeping our stitches consistent, but we're going to keep tucking that baby in. See how much nicer that looks? That's what you want to strive for. And you can get there by tucking that baby in. That's good. So I'm going to start out at normal speed. And we're going 
that you feel in our six inch square. And you can see by tucking in the baby, it gives a nice curved look to this fill. But the only way you can get this effect is to constantly remember to tuck in that baby. So I'm going to speed this up because it's basically the same thing over and over. I don't need you to fall asleep on me. But you see every time I go from one side to the other, you can think of the size as the group rails. For your stitching is fairly even on your echoing, it'll be fine. You'll see as we go along, since we've got a, some strange curves here, by tucking that in, it makes everything go together just perfectly. There it is, all finished. You can call this tucking in the baby, or you can call it wormholes, whichever. But it does make a pretty design on your foot.